Here are my brushes. I have some rigor and fine point brushes here. I have an array of uh, round brushes. Riggers tend to be round, mine are. This is a mop, which is a nice big billowy um, mop brush, which is great for soft edges and uh, figurative work. Here are some brights. There's an array of them here. They are essentially flat brushes that are shorter in length than longer in accord to the ratio of the base and length. Going over here, what I have are an array of, of flat brushes, which are um, similar to brights, only they are longer. All right, moving further over, I come into my fan brushes. I don't use a lot of fan brushes. I only have about three of them. There's my last bright. Here I have a bunch of filberts. Um, and they are essentially flat brushes with uh, rounded tips to them. I have them in a variety of sizes and uh, handle length. And then I just have a very large um, area brush. This is a collection that I take with me generally when I'm working in the field or I'm going on a long trip. Here we are at the palette, and I'm going to go over this very quickly with you. I'm beginning here in the upper left-hand corner. You may or may not be able to see my pointer. It's a long-handled brush. There we go. That's a little bit clearer. Uh, this is a burnt sienna. I use it as a warm neutral or a warm red. Then I have a violet. Then I have process magenta, which I use as a cool red. Here I have a straightforward vermilion. And then here I have a cadmium red. Here I have a cadmium orange. I have a cadmium yellow deep and a cadmium yellow medium. This is a lighter lemon yellow that I use. I can't remember exactly the title of it at this time, but it is a cooler, lighter yellow. Next to that, I use a yellow ochre. I have a long history of enjoying that color. Here I have um, titanium white mixed with raw umber. It comes in uh, a manufactured form and it's called uh, like a linen white or uh, a titanium raw. This is titanium white in and of itself. Here I have um, light yellow phthalo green. Here I have a sap green. Here I have a straightforward uh, phthalo green. That's a very blue, blue green for me, and I'm trying to get a full range here from the brilliant, uh, paler, warmer green to something that's neutral in the middle to very cool green here. Similarly with the blues, I have a cerulean blue, which is a very uh, aqua type of blue. I have a cobalt, which is often referred to as a royal blue. It's a, a vibrant blue, and then I use the ultramarine blue, which has a tremendous amount of iron oxide in it, and it often goes uh, brown when it is mixed with red to make violet. So that's why I maintain violet on my palette when I use the expanded palette, palette as I'm showing here. Then I have a Prussian blue, which I tend to overuse. Uh, it's the manganese blue, and I overuse it as a shade element or a value control on my palette. And then finally, with some resistance, but I keep it at bay from time to time, I have a Payne's Gray, which I also use as a value control or a cool uh, dark element for my color palette. I'm looking at uh, two acorn squash here, and I wanted to do some uh, work here in the shade area. You can see it's unfinished uh, just a little bit, and it's not congruent with the mirror 
shade reflection of the other acorn uh, squash on this side. This is my palette that I've outlined before. I did want to indicate that what I use um, in the field is a very simple water media palette tray. It is often marketed for watercolor artists, however it works uh, very well uh, for acrylics and that's what I'm using. I'm using um, a grade that is in between student and uh, professional grade uh, for the acrylic products and I'm using a large uh, manufactured uh, name which means it's uh, easily available for me to obtain uh, replacement tubes or additional colors uh, just about anywhere in the continental United States. Alright, so I want to address this specific area right here. I also want to lift some of the intense bluing out that I put in here. Um, when it uh, finally set up the last time, I realized that my colors were way, way too blue. And then I also wanted to fix this corner area, um, as well as address anything else that may come up for me in the overall appearance. I might slip a little bit more shadow into this area right here. So first of all, I want to look at my paint brushes that I have shown you already. And I want to pick out um, a round uh, of a fairly average size. There you can see it. Um, and I'm going to dampen it and I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of uh, my blue here and I want to warm it up with a little bit of blue green brown that I have already on the tray. I'm looking for a warm shadow. This is very green right now so I'm going to go ahead and dip into the Prussian blue uh, that bluing that is on there is essentially ultramarine blue. And I might use my fingers a little bit. That's really a no-no in the world of paint because the paints are very toxic. I just didn't remember to bring my sponge with me. I use a sponge. I might also pick up any excess paint with an additional brush. On this part of the tray I often do washes or I test washes and there it is, that's a pretty good dark color. So I'm going to come right up here and just very gently pull some of that in on top of the navy blue that I have. I'm looking at that form right there. I want to bring it down a little bit. I want to shade this down just a little bit. And over here as well. I'm going to take a little bit more of this kind of blue, blue, green and pull it in right there. It's a little bit too much. Taking that out. And I'm going to warm up that deep navy blue shadow just a little bit. Just resetting that. I'm softening it. Coming in there a little bit. Taking that out. It looked a bit, bit too tinny when I put it in. Okay. I'm going to rinse off and it still looks a little bit too uh, blue for me so I'm going on to my warmer side of the tray I tend to mix my warms and my lights here and my cools and my darks there and this is a mishmash of, of test area okay a little bit of uh, red there it's probably about three or four reds with a touch of Payne's gray in there and I'm just going to touch it in there a little bit. I'm not afraid to use the warm in the lower part of the front of this painting because it's going to bring the foreground forward. And there we go. A little bit more of that. Bring that up there. Put that shadow into place and put that up there a little bit. Okay, bringing in a little warm over here. Very good. I'm 
My easel today, it is a standard a vintage uh, photographer's uh, tripod with a uh, plein air canvas bracket attached to it on the universal mount. And instead of using the points here to hold the canvas, I'm just using the pressure of the bars that holds the points to hold a, an 11 by 14 panel. Very standard object there. Get that corner corrected and bring that whole corner down a little bit. bit more over here on this side. I don't know if you can see me in the frame there. All right, I'm going to get just a touch, a touch of uh, orange in here to do a little bit more of the shadow work. Just a bit of the lemon yellow coming up here in the highlight area to match this. A bit more. And I'm going to come back down. Doesn't have to be distinct, just a little bit of information. Go ahead and move that in a little bit. shadow a little bit and I want to close this in just a little bit more I have to clean my brush it's not quite uh, dark enough get a little bit more of the Prussian blue and the green mishmash on there a touch of warm That's better. Looks like I lost my outdoor light just now. We've got a partially cloudy sky today. And it is December. I am not a fan of studio painting at all. I'm a plein air artist, or at least I like to consider myself as one, and a colorist. So I like color. I like being out in the open air, and today I'm doing something very much against my nature. I'm not afraid to experiment to get to the place I want to be here with this image, and to move around a bit. There we are, softer still. going to bring this area down. It's way too light. Go right here. Again, there's some blue. It might be too much blue. Bring in a little red. It's to be behind this piece here, so it has to be more red on this edge to put that behind there we go, it's behind I'll bring that up
That's very bright. I'm going to go ahead and blend it in. Put a little bit of horizontal action there for the ribs on the acorn. There's enough paint there now from the acrylic that I can do quite a bit of uh, blending and smoothing around. There's a lot of thin, thin glazes on top of it at this moment. foot against the easel. Mixing a warmer violet right now. Looking at that. And just putting some ribs in there for the device. Just needs a good hint or two. We don't really know what's there on the table. We know from the reference photo, but we don't really know as a viewer. We come into it innocently. We don't really have a full idea. Gives us some artistic license. Just clean that glob up a little bit there. And put some more warmth over there. Cover up that area a little bit. Going to add a little bit of blue to the edge of the shadow out here. The reflection, the shadow, however you want to look at it. It's a reflection. Okay. And a lot more right there.
So this painting is a series of lots of little glazes and things, um, dabs, scumbling, glazes. I started out very light and I'm just continuing it that way. put a little definition in it. I'm going to just put a swatch of lighter color there. Continuing it right there. My surface a little dry, so I'm going to dip my finger in just a touch of water. There we go. Pull that blue back. I'm going to mix some violet now and hopefully just finish this off. Red right there, yellow, and a lot more blue right there. I think I have what I'm looking for now in this. Just a few touches here and there really make it look like that gorgeous acorn squash is showing up, playing with the cadmiums a little bit. Lemon yellow works good in the shade area, it's cool comes out as a type of green. Just a few smatterings here and there. A few streaks. a little bit of form development and pull it out a little bit here. There we go. Alright, I'm just about out of my light and uh, I'm going to let that set up and dry and check it later. But for now, that is where I'm at with that particular piece.